Hey everyone, Sweet Johnny Cage here. Happy October 2021. It is almost Halloween time, and to celebrate, I'm going back to an old favorite, Castlevania Symphony of the Night. I've gotten a request for a video similar to the one that I did for Bloodstained Ritual of the Night, where I showed you where to go in case you're ever stuck. I'm doing the same thing here for Symphony of the Night. Getting stuck in Symphony of the Night is really easy to do. It's a really big game with lots of optional stuff, including a lot of optional bosses. But there is a critical path through the game, and I'll also show you some optional stuff that will help you along the way. So without further ado, let's get started. First thing you're going to do is defeat Dracula during the prologue. The easiest way to do this is to get into phase two, and then just use two Hydro Storms on his demon phase, and he'll drop like a sack of potatoes. Getting through this fight with full health gives you the most power-ups and the best stats as Alucard, and defeating it without getting uh, killed by Dracula and resurrected by Maria gives you decent stats as well. I think some starting items too, if I'm not mistaken. Going through the castle entrance and the alchemy lab, you want to defeat the first boss, Slagra and Gaibon. Next, you want to make your way to the outer wall, as seen here on the map. There's not really too many places else you can go. But once you get through here, there is a secret room right here that is guarded by a big knight. But if you crouch in this broken wall for quite some time, the floor will turn into an elevator and it will bring you down into another room that you normally need to have the power of mist in order to access. But using this elevator, you can get the jewel knuckle as well as some pretty good armor. The jewel knuckle is a fantastic weapon to have early game. It does have a very short range, so you got to be careful, but if you hold uh, down and a direction, so down left and down right, uh, you can do a kick. Next, you want to make your way to the long library, and then once here, you want to make your way to the librarian and purchase the first item. This is the Jewel of Open. Forgive me for playing this on the Japanese version. I was recording all this to make a comparison with the Sega Saturn version, which I hope to get to eventually. But the very first item in the librarian's store will be the Jewel of Open, and it costs $500. With the Jewel of Open in your inventory, you want to then come back to the Alchemy Lab, to this location. This is right by the first boss fight. And now that you have the Jewel, you can open this glowing blue door, which will lead you to the chapel. You'll also run into Maria here again. Next up, you want to go to the Castle Keep, which you will reach if you progress through that area, which is the chapel. So once in the Castle Keep, you want to get to the roof of this entry section. Really easy to get to, you just go around. And then at the end of this area will be the Leap Stone, which gives you the power of double jump. From here, you can break open a wall and then return to the Marble Gallery. And inside of this particular lamp is a stopwatch sub item or sub weapon. This stopwatch is always here, and this is totally optional to do, but in case you're wondering how to solve this big puzzle, you wanna make your way back to the central clock room, and this clock room is gonna be visited a lot in both castles. So this is the path back. It's pretty easy, but it kinda of is tough to get to sometimes. There's not a warp that's super close that you have unlocked at this point, so it does require a fair bit of backtracking. But once you are in the central clock room, you want to use the stopwatch sub weapon. That moves the statue on the right, and then using the double jump, you can get up here. And then you have the Alucard shield, a heart max up, and then in the next room you have the Alucard mail and the Alucard sword. If you complete the Alucard set, it raises your luck a considerable amount, but it is not as powerful as the actual Alucard set. This left statue moves every minute, and the in-game minutes are in real time. So once you get through there, you wanna go here into All Rocks' quarters, and then you wanna go through this door, and we're gonna to go to the Colosseum next. The bosses of the Colosseum are the first couple bosses from the original Castlevania, and those are lorded over by Richter. So once you get into this area, you'll find a library card here as well, and then we're gonna use that library card right after this boss. After we defeat these bosses, which is the Minotaur and the Werewolf, once you have defeated each boss, you can then proceed into the next room. You want to watch out for this floor switch that does activate an elevator. It's okay if you land on it, just press up and you go back up. But now you have the Soul of Mist. With the Soul of Mist in tow, you want to take out a library card and use it. This will transport you back to the long library 
right next to the librarian, no matter where you are in either castle. So be very careful with library cards. They do stack, so always make sure that after you use one, you re-equip whatever was in that hand. Otherwise, you're going to be adventuring for a while, accidentally press the button, use a library card, and lose a bunch of progress. Back in the library, now that we have the double jump and the soul of mist, we can come onto this staircase here, double jump over, and then defeat some enemies. And what we're going to be doing now is we're going to be going into a somewhat secret area of the long library. There is a save room through this area here. And if you look closely, you'll notice that there is no brick wall where there usually is on the other side of the save room. That's because this one has an exit. These are pretty rare throughout the game, but they do appear, so always be looking in save rooms uh, for these other exits. The boss of this area is the Lesser Demon. While fighting it, make sure that you wait for him to summon a Mudman, and then you can kill the Mudman, and then you'll get credit for your bestiary. That's the only way to kill Mudmen. It's the only way to find them. Once you defeat the Lesser Demon, use the Soul of Mist to go through this gate, and then you will get the Soul of Bat. So now we can transform into a bat. This next thing is optional, but if you return to the central clock room and use the Soul of Bat, you can go all the way up this shaft, and then on the right side of the next room, we're gonna wing crush to get over there, there are the gravity boots. I do wanna take this time to talk about the Sega Saturn version of the game, because after you have the Soul of Bat and the gravity boots, you're able to get through the underground garden section of the game successfully. This area is only available in the Sega Saturn version, or as me and my friends call it, the Sacred Saturn version. The Underground Garden only features uh, one boss and a few newer enemies that were, I think, in the game files of the PS1 version, but never implemented. You can reach the Underground Garden section as soon as you speak with death at the very beginning of the game, but you can't actually do anything here until you either have the Soul of Bat or the Gravity Boots. I highly recommend Soul of Bat over the Gravity Boots just because it's way easier to go through. I will take this time to show you the entirety of this section. There's really not much here, but it does give you a really great rendition of Bloody Tears. In the Sega Saturn version, you can also do an infinite wing crush all the way through the area. So I'll stop talking and I'll just show you this section now because this really isn't available to most people unless you have the import Saturn version. So here you go. So with the Underground Garden section out of the way for playing the Saturn version, it's time to get back on track and return to the central clock room and use the gravity boots to full effect. The gravity boots are what I call the down-up boots, and they allow you to basically fly through the air more or less. So once you're ready, you want to go back to Alrox's quarters, and in this room here, we're going to wing crush to the other side just to ignore the enemies, and then we're going to use the gravity boots to quickly get up the next section. So to use the gravity boots, you just press down, up, and jump at the same time. So down, then up, and jump at the same time. 
and then you can fly through the air. If you're really skilled with this, you can actually go in different directions. I'm not that good with it. But once you reach up here, we can adventure through this area, and then you will eventually find this section that you need the bat to get through. Here's a spooky looking door. And then we are now going to fight All Rocks himself. All Rocks is actually a pretty hard boss, but once you defeat him, you want to go into this next room, and now we're going to get the Echo of Bat. The Echo of Bat allows us to use sonar to light up dark rooms. So now it's time to use that. Once you have the Echo of Bat, you want to return to the Marble Gallery, and there is a blue door that you need the Jewel of Open to open. On the other side, there is a floor switch. This floor switch will open up the red floor areas that are in the Marble Gallery. There's only two, but the main one that we need is right in this room here. Great, so we want to drop down and then go all the way down and now we're going to be able to go through the underground cavern. The underground cavern has quite a bit of optional content including the ability to uh, swim more or less or just walk underwater without taking damage. But from here we first need to defeat the succubus. So from this section you want to start falling down the shaft and then use the soul of bat, transform, go through this area, and you will eventually find a very peculiar looking save room. There is a normal save room on the other side, so check that out before you do this. But this save room will actually transport you to the succubus boss fight in the nightmare. This boss fight can be challenging, so make sure you have a decent ranged weapon. But once the succubus goes down, you will have a little cutscene, some dialogue with the succubus and Alucard, and you'll be transported back here, and then you will see the gold ring laying on the floor, so make sure to collect that. This next section is somewhat optional, but we can get the mermaid statue if we just ride the ferryman's boat all the way across this section. The mermaid statue will be here, and all this does is summon the ferryman in another location. This next part is not optional. In the big waterfall room, you want to use the soul of bat to come on over, push this switch. This will drop a barrel holding skeleton, and when he throws the barrel, it breaks the bridge. So next up, this part is optional, but we're gonna get the snorkel now, which allows us to breathe underwater, which is very helpful. And somehow that enemy dropped an ice mail, it's pretty rare. You wanna jump onto the ferryman's boat. This does require the mermaid statue ride it all the way to the other side, and then in this next section, we will find the snorkel. So with the snorkel, we can just walk underwater and no longer have to worry about taking damage. This is totally optional, but it's very, very helpful. Okay, so after we push that switch near the waterfall room, we want to come back to the bridge room located right here. We want to kill the frogs, but you'll notice that I'm approaching the left side pretty slowly, and that's because we need to kite this barrel-holding skeleton over to the bridge. You don't want it to go off screen, otherwise it can despawn and you'll have to redo this. But as you get across the bridge, the skeleton will chuck the barrel at you once you get close enough. This will break the bridge, so go ahead and grab your heart max up and your HP max up. And now we can go to the next section of the game, which has the spookiest music in the entire game in my opinion, and if not in all of video games. It really freaked me out the first time I played this game. But in this next section, which is the Abandoned Pit to the Catacomb, we're going to fight Cerberus. Holy Water is very effective against it. Then we're going to come all the way down here, and this is where we use the Echo of Bat. So in this room, transform into a bat and press Triangle to use your Echo. And then you'll notice that the walls are lined with spikes. So you need to very carefully fly through this room using the sonar, and then this will allow you to get through safely. On the other side of this room, You'll notice this switch on the ground, so go back to Alucard form, press the switch, and then the room is now lit up. Adventure through the next area, and you will find the Spike Breaker Mail. With the Spike Breaker Mail, you can now walk across those spikes and they will break. It's pretty aptly named. With the Spike Breaker Mail in tow, you want to go back to the chapel, and now you can get through this hallway unscathed. Make sure you still have the Spike Breaker Mail equipped. So walk through these, use the Soul of Mist to get through this gate, and then you can go through this next area, and then you will need the Jewel of Open to open this door. So there's like a lot of blockers to make sure you don't do this early, although there are ways to do it. Okay, in this room you'll speak with Maria, 
After that conversation wraps up, she will leave, and then on the far end of this room is the silver ring. So now that you have the gold and silver rings both in your inventory, you want to go back to the central clock room and equip each ring on each finger. You need to have both of these equipped. I think they complete a sentence in the English version that says where in clock room or something like that. But once you have both equipped, exit the menu, and then while you're in the room, the floor will open up after the bell tolls, I believe, 13 times. And then after that happens, you can jump into the pit, and then this will lead you to another area. Once you're here, you want to ride the elevator all the way down, and then in this very spooky looking room, you're going to just follow the halls until you reach a central platform. An elevator will automatically trigger, and then you will be speaking with Maria. Keep in mind that in both the Sega Saturn version and the PSP version, as well as I guess the PS4 version, you will actually fight Maria here. However, in the PS1 version, you do not. After your conversation with Maria or the boss fight ends, you will then have the holy glasses in your inventory. Next, you can go through the clock tower or you can return straight to the castle keep. I enjoyed the clock tower because of the music. The boss of the clock tower is Karasuman. Not too difficult of a boss, especially at this stage of the game, but if you encounter him early, it can be kind of tough. You can just hit him and keep him up in this corner, and then eventually he will fall. Once the boss has been defeated, you can exit, and you will be back at the bloody staircase from the prologue of the game. Once you're here, you want to equip the holy glasses from your inventory that you received from either defeating Maria on the Saturn or other versions, or just through the conversation in the PlayStation version. You can use a solo bat to fly where the staircase should have been, and then you will come into contact with Richter Belmont. If you have the Holy Glasses equipped, you will notice a green orb flying around Richter throughout the boss fight. That's your actual target. If you were to kill Richter himself instead of the orb, the game will end and you will get the bad ending. So having the Holy Glasses equipped is very important. That said, however, don't forget to actually hit Richter because that will give you some credit in your bestiary, otherwise you won't be able to get it at all until another playthrough. So once the orb has been defeated, Shaft will be revealed, and then you will now have access to the inverted castle, which is one of the biggest twists in gaming, so welcome to 1997. This cutscene blew a lot of minds, although not mine, I didn't play this game in 97. A friend of mine introduced it to me in the early 2000s, and I think I first played it on Xbox 360. Anyway, in the inverted castle keep, you want to navigate to this area on the map, and now we're going to fight the bat demon boss. Once this boss is defeated, we will receive the first relic of Vlad, which is the ring of Vlad. Now what we have to do is defeat the rest of the original Castlevania bosses and collect all of the relics similar to what we have to do in Castlevania II Simon's Quest. The next thing we're going to do is totally optional, but the floating heads in the inverted long library have a very rare chance of dropping the Chrysogrim, which is a sword that allows you to swing while you walk. So this is very powerful. Back on track, you want to go to the inverted outer wall, and then in this location where we fought the level 10 doppelganger in the regular castle, we will instead fight the creature. The creature goes down pretty easily, and then the reward for defeating the creature is the rib of Vlad. Next up, you want to go to inverted Ulrox's quarters, and where we fought Ulrox, we will now fight the mummy. The mummy is a total pushover. I cannot exaggerate that enough. Um, I really can't. He dies in two seconds. It really doesn't matter what weapon you're going to use. He's going to go down pretty fast. For defeating the mummy, we get this really cool kind of custom death animation that only he has. Basically fades into dust, going back to Hamanoptera. And then the reward for defeating him is the rib of Vlad Relic. Next up, you want to go to the inverted chapel, and we're now going to defeat Medusa. Medusa at this stage of the game, even if you don't have the Chrysogrim, is going to go down pretty quick. Just try not to get hit by any of her beams, because she does have a chance to turn you into stone. But once she goes down, we get the next relic, which is the Heart of Vlad. The next thing I'm going to show you is totally optional, but in this rock structure in the castle entrance, 
You want to go through one side as the bat, and then go back through as the wolf. And then this will open a secret passage also located in this room. And inside of this passage in the inverted entrance will be the barrel circlet, which allows you to be healed by lightning attacks. So this is very, very helpful for a boss later on. So this item right here is the barrel circlet. The jewel sword is located there in the regular castle. In the inverted pit, you want to go to this location on the map here, and now we're gonna fight death. Death can be difficult if you don't have a strong weapon and a high level, so just beware going into this fight. This can get kinda crazy. But once death goes down, we will get the final relic of Vlad, which is the Eye of Vlad. That said, however, I'm going to show you how to defeat the sort of secret extra boss of the game, Gallimoth. As long as you have that barrel circlet equipped that we got earlier on in the inverted castle entrance, you can just stand here and well on the boss, and his lightning attacks will heal you. So with Gallimoth out of the way, let's get back on track. Once you have all the relics of Vlad in your inventory, you want to return to the inverse main clock room, and then as long as you have all the relics in your inventory, the clock will strike 13 times just as it did before, and then the ceiling opens up this time, and where we had that conversation with Maria in the regular castle, we are now going to fight Shaft and then Dracula. Shaft is a pushover. He's very easy to defeat, but he is part of the Dracula fight. So if you die to Dracula, you will have to fight Shaft again. I also want to mention that if you're going for the trophy on PS4 called Shafted, that you will need to actually hit Shaft with Richter's whip in order to get credit. If you attempt to defeat him with a Hydro Storm with Richter, and you never actually touch him with your whip, you won't get credit. I do have a full walkthrough for how to get through the game as Richter, but you know we'll cover that another time. Okay, so once Shaft goes down, which is pretty quick, Dracula reveals himself. There really is no sort of auto-healing mechanic that you can use on Dracula like with other bosses. You kind of just got to go for him. Don't be afraid to drop food on the ground, use meal tickets, do whatever you have to do to get through this fight. Defeating Dracula will give you the good ending. However, if you defeat Dracula with at least 196% map completion, you will get the best ending. So there are a total of four endings to this game. The worst is when you defeat Richter. The bad ending is when you defeat Richter while wearing the holy glasses. The good ending is to defeat Dracula. And then the best ending is to defeat Dracula with at least 196% map completion. But that's it. That is the critical path, for the most part, through Symphony of the Night, and hopefully this helps you if you are stuck in the game. As always, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment. I will do my best to help you out. If you're looking for more guides for Castlevania Symphony of the Night, subscribe to the channel so you get it alerted when new guides go live. I've also covered this game in depth in the past, so feel free to check out my catalog. If you're interested in supporting the channel monetarily, please consider becoming a channel member by clicking the blue join button below this video. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter and join my Discord. The link for that is in the description below. As always, I'm Sweet Johnny Cage. Thank you so much for watching, and happy Halloween 2021. Bye-bye.